Hello everyone. Today we're going to be learning about power sources, in particular the power sources that are used to produce electricity. We're also going to be looking at some of the energy transformations that occur within an electric generator. Now a generator, as we know, is a device that turns mechanical energy, that is kinetic energy, into electrical energy. The first generator was invented in the 1800s by a fellow named Michael Faraday, who discovered the principles of electromagnetic induction, which allows the transformation of mechanical energy to electrical energy. Now, the design of generators has improved over time, and currently we use a steam turbine generator in order to produce electricity. So how exactly does the steam turbine generator work? Let's take a look. Uh, in order to produce electricity with a modern generator, we need to spin a magnet at high speeds. The faster we spin it, uh, the more electricity we can get out of it. Uh, this relates to the principles of electromagnetic induction. But it will also mean that the magnet won't spin freely. We need to constantly provide it with energy in order to keep it spinning. Otherwise, it will slow down very quickly. So the method produces an AC signal, or alternating current signal. There are ways of producing generators which uh, allow a DC signal, that is direct current, but AC signal is more commonly used. Now the magnet is spun by a turbine. A turbine is a device that spins when, a, uh, when air or steam is blown through it. So the steam from the turbine uh, is going to be produced in a boiler heated by coal or gas, or by the heat of a nuclear reactor. So what will happen is that the uh, steam produced, which will be moving very fast as it's produced, is blown through a turbine, looking much like this one. And as it blows across the blades of the turbine, the turbine begins to spin. And the spinning is, of course, what turns the magnet and the magnet produces electricity. So the steam is condensed back into water and recycled once it's been used to turn the turbine. Now in New South Wales, uh, we use a lot of coal to generate power. In fact, 80% of the power generated in New South Wales is generated by coal generators. Uh, the main power stations in New South Wales are located in Hunter Valley, Lake Macquarie and Lithgow. Our generators can convert about 36% uh, of the coal's energy to electrical energy, which doesn't really sound like a huge amount. But remember that by burning the coal, we produce enormous amounts of energy. So even if we can only turn 36% of this energy into electricity, we still have a lot of electricity to go around. Now, an increasing number of countries are using nuclear power instead of fossil fuels in order to produce electricity. So the uranium fuel in nuclear reactors produces a very, very large amount of energy, uh, much larger than the energy of, say, coal. Uh, the energy is absorbed by a coolant, which carries heat out of the reactor, and that coolant is used to heat water, so that the water itself doesn't become radioactive. Uh, the coolant heats the water to boiling point where it becomes steam and blows through a turbine, just the same as if we were heating the water with uh, a coal fire. Now, the reason that people use uranium instead of coal is because it contains much more energy per kilogram than coal uh, and makes it a far more attractive power source. We can see that illustrated in this photograph. The huge mountains of coal in the background of the photograph uh, only contain the same amount of power as the few pellets of uranium in the foreground. You can see now why uh, uraniums are a more attractive power source than coal, in, simply in terms of the energy density, that is, the amount of energy that they contain. Uh, one of the problems with uh, nuclear power plants is that the spent radioactive fuel uh, is radioactive and cannot be safely disposed of very easily. Uh, radioactive materials are able to be damaging 
uh, to living things if living things are exposed to them for long enough. So nuclear disasters are one of the other drawbacks of using nuclear reactors. And although they're very, very rare, occurring perhaps two or three times in a hundred years, they can be extremely destructive and uh, produce a lot of danger in a very wide area. So another alternative to producing electricity, if we're not going to use coal or uranium, is using wind generators or water generators. So these will produce less energy than burning coal or using uranium in nuclear reactors, but they are their renewable resources of energy. We won't run out of wind. So these generators use wind or water to turn a turbine, right? Instead of producing steam, that will then turn the turbine. So these uh, wind, uh, wind generators that we can see in this photograph over here have uh, long turbines like a windmill. And when these are turned, uh, they, turn a, they spin a magnet which will produce electricity. So the generators do not produce pollution and they uh, do not produce any dangerous waste products like coal and uranium do. And of course they also won't run out. Now water generators don't have to be powered by just one source. There are water generators that can be powered by rivers, by the flow of the water in rivers, by ocean tides as they come in and out, or just by waves as they roll up and down. There are seven hydroelectric power stations in the snowy mountains of Australia, and these are responsible for the rest of the power in New South Wales. Another way that we can get energy to produce electricity is from light. By using devices called photovoltaic cells, we can transform light energy directly into electrical energy without any intervening steps. These are quite expensive to produce and they're not very efficient. Uh, most uh, photovoltaic cells will convert less than 30% of the light energy they receive into electrical energy. The best photovoltaic cells can produce slightly more, but they're still under 50%. So energy obtained during the day has to be stored up because obviously the solar panels won't operate at night. So we take this energy and we store it with a large battery. Uh, finally, we can use geothermal power as an energy source. So the, sun, the Earth's mantle and crust contain a lot of heat energy, right? That's why the core of the Earth is molten. So if we have a geyser, or hot rocks underground, we can use either one of these in order to heat up water and produce steam, or we can simply use the steam themselves, uh, use the steam itself to turn a generator. So the steam can be used for direct heating as well, instead of using it to produce electricity and then later to produce heating. So geothermal energy is not uh, a very well used amount of uh, source of power yet, but in the future it may provide a very nice way of gathering energy. All right, so that's the end of the theory. We've learned about a number of different power sources and how we can use them to produce electricity. Let's go on to some questions. Question 11. What power sources are used to produce electricity in New South Wales? Is it coal and uranium? coal and the sun, coal and geothermal energy, or coal and water? Can you remember the answer to this one? One of them is obviously coal. What's the other? Uh, although Australia has a fair amount of uranium, we don't have any nuclear power plants. Solar power would be another good way to produce electricity, except that the photovoltaic cells that we produce are very expensive and very inefficient. And so solar power is not a hugely popular alternative to coal power. Geothermal energy isn't very popular either. It doesn't contain 
Australia itself doesn't contain any geothermal power plants. Uh, the last option then is coal and water, and in fact this is the correct answer. The Snowy Mountains, due to the Snowy Mountain River scheme, house a number of dams and hydroelectric plants which can use the flowing water of the rivers coming down from the mountains in order to produce electricity. Question 12. On what principles do generators operate? Is it electrostatic charge, electromagnetic waves, electrochemical potential, or electromagnetic induction? Now only one of these should sound familiar at this point, although you'll be learning about all of these uh, eventually. Electrostatic charge relates to static electricity. That's the little spark you can get if you rub rubber shoes on the carpet for long enough. Electromagnetic waves are a form of energy transferal, and some forms of electromagnetic waves include things like light or x-rays. Electrochemical potential is what we store up in batteries, and when we produce electricity with the battery, we say we're converting uh, the electrochemical potential of the battery into electricity. This is not, however, how generators operate. Generators operate on electromagnetic induction, so D is the correct answer. Electromagnetic induction is something that allows us to turn mechanical energy into electrical energy. Question 13. Explain why a turbine is a necessary part of a generator. Why do we need something that spins? Well, think back to how we actually produce electricity in the first place. What we need to do is spin a magnet. So the turbine of a generator is required to spin the magnet inside the generator. And the magnet is what produces electricity by the process of electromagnetic induction, which requires it to spin. We can see just from the name electromagnetic induction that it has to do with both electricity and magnets. Question 14. Is coal power uh, of a coal power plant and a nuclear power plant, which one uses less fuel? Explain why. Can you see what the answer will be? The nuclear power plant produces the same energy as a coal power plant using far less fuel. In fact, the energy stored up in a particular mass of uranium is uh, about a million times greater than the energy stored in the same mass of coal. So uranium, a nuclear fuel, contains much, much more energy per kilogram than coal. Coal is a chemical fuel, but uranium is a nuclear fuel. Instead of using the chemical potential, it uses the nuclear potential in order to produce energy. The energy density of uranium is in fact over a million times greater than that of coal. That means that if we have a single gram of uranium, we need not uh, 1,000 grams, but a million grams. That is a whole ton of coal in order to match the power of the single gram of uranium. Question 15. Compare nuclear power plants and coal power plants. When we have a question that starts with compare, it's a good idea to point out both the similarities and the differences between them. So coal power plants burn large amounts of coal for energy. Uh, coal is very abundant in Australia. Uh, however, both mining and uh, burning coal produces pollution. That might be ash, carbon dioxide, and sulfur dioxide. So these are some of the things that coal power plants are. Now we can compare it to nuclear power plants like this. We can use small uranium pellets for energy instead of large amounts of coal for energy. Uranium is also abundant in Australia, just like the fuel for coal power plants. Uh, and nuclear power plants are much cleaner than coal power plants. So that's one of the differences. Uh, however, the leftover radioactive waste is hard to dispose of. Coal power plants, of course, do not produce radioactive waste. Uh, uranium mining produces pollution just like coal mining produces pollution. 
One of the similarities between the two types of generator is that they both produce heat, which is used to heat steam that turns a turbine. And that, of course, is what produces electricity. So we're at the end of the questions now, uh, which means that we've finished the section. We've learned about various different forms of energy, like wind and water energy, nuclear energy, and coal energy, and talked about how they're used in generators in order to produce electricity.